When a massive star dies, most of its material collapses into a compact object known as a black hole. Because of their strong gravity, black holes are famous for pulling in any, anything and everything around them. But imagine for a moment your kitchen sink. When you pull the plug to empty the sink, the water doesn't just fall straight down. Instead, it spirals around many times before eventually falling down the plug. Black holes suck in material in a very similar manner, and so around them, we find this structure of, swirling ga of gas swirling towards them. I have an example here of a star in orbit around a black hole. The black hole is pulling material away from the star, but I've deliberately blurred out where the black hole is and the material swirling around it. This is because despite how powerful these objects are and how advanced our telescopes are, we still can't see what's happening around the black hole. One thing we can observe is the light that's emitted from across this entire region, and when we do, we find that it oscillates rapidly. The frequency with which it oscillates is identified by the small lumps in the example on the, the um, observational example in white. These features are known as quasi-periodic oscillations, and despite being observed first more than 30 years ago, there's still no complete and satisfactory model to explain them. Our challenge is then to model this region that we can't see and to check that our model is correct by comparing to these observations. To do this, we use numerical simulations using the technique known as smooth particle hydrodynamics. I've got the same simulation here, shown in blue, with a black hole just about here. Our model suggests that the star should come in on a totally different direction. This, in combination with the rotation of the black hole, rips the material that's swirling towards the black hole into these remarkable rings. These rings interact and eventually produce a tiny disk around the black hole that you can see edged on in the final two panels. This disk um, wobbles like a spinning top and it's this motion that we identify as the source of our quasi-periodic oscillations. Our comparison to the observation shows that we recover the general trend as well as um, frequencies in the range suggested by the observations. But the match isn't perfect. Where these features are identified is most strongly constrained by how fast a black hole is rotating. And so in future, we seek to use this model to measure these kinds of parameters um, by comparing to existing observations like this one. And so even though we can't actually see what's going on in this region, by using simulations and comparing to observations, we can work it out. Thank you.